Welcome back, Proppers. Today we'll be making the Crypt Keeper from the Tales from the Crypt series. As usual for my builds, it won't be an exact replica. You'll be getting my own personal version of our beloved ghoul. I'll be starting off my build with the Mannequin Head template from the Much Props channel. One of my favorite creators. You can get the template from his channel, Much Props. I'll leave a link in the description. The template is a build for the head, neck, and chest. I'll be leaving out the chest for this particular build. I saved most of the templates from my prior builds for these particular occasions. They can be used as is or altered for future builds. After cutting out all the template pieces and attaching them with contact cement, I make all the alterations needed for this particular project. For a slower step-by-step -step process of attaching the template pieces, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go to my first build. Or you can go to the original builder, Much Props. I'm rushing through this part of the process because the build is more about the facial features of the Crypt Keeper. After getting the head completely assembled, I smooth out all the seams with my rotary tool. This not only smoothed out the seams, it removes the residue and the discoloration from the contact cement. During this part of the process, make sure you're using the proper safety equipment, like eye protection and a dust mask. After sanding, I dust off the head and give it a good wipe down with denatured alcohol. I use a little magic to give it the first base coat of Cabernet paint. No, there's no rhyme or reason to the particular color. It's just the first thing I picked up out of my cabinet. At this point, I have to create a flat, weighted base for the head. After taking a couple of measurements, I cut a piece of 3 quarter inch ply for the base. To get a proper fit, I have to trim the corners of the plywood. After trimming down the corners of the base, I attach garden stones to it with hot glue to weigh it down. Then the base is glued and sealed to the head. I mark out a pattern for the foam clay I'll be using to create most of the facial detailing. To save on foam clay, I bulk up some of the sections with half dowel EVA foam. From this point, I'll be improvising everything as I go along. For the eyes, I created circles with epoxy putty and then cut them into semi-spears. And I cut out pieces of 4mm EVA foam for the teeth. I pulled thin strands of foam clay across the face to create the venous look. I had to make constant adjustments because the heavy buildup of foam clay would droop before it would dry. After giving the foam clay a couple of days to set, I gave the entire project a full coating of high performance white paint. I then applied a second coat of the closest color I had to our favorite ghoul's flesh tone. I started adding the base hues to the face with my air gun and planned on using it for the entire project, but it just wasn't cooperative. I completed as much as I could with the air gun before deciding that the constant stop and go to make adjustments wasn't worth the hassle. This particular gun was a part of a very inexpensive kit, so I'll probably be ordering a new air gun. I used a red sharpie to highlight the veins in the face. I decided at the last minute to put a few more wrinkled features with foam clay in the head and neck, something I probably should have done a lot earlier. 
I decided to work around these new features because I wasn't ready to wait another two days for it to dry. I purchased a long white wig on Amazon and then altered it to fit my purposes. The Crypt Keeper's hairline is all the way toward the back, leaving his long forehead exposed. I made a template of the area of the wig that will be attached to the head, marked out the position on the head, and attached it with hot glue. This is just another element that I should have waited to the last minute to do. I ended up having to cover the hair to finish the painting on the head and neck. Not to mention that the new additions of foam clay to the head and neck wasn't dry yet and I had to constantly keep fixing it. After the hot glue for the hair had properly set, I trimmed it down to length. After recovering the hair with plastic wrap, I made some final detailing by brush with acrylic paint. And that brings us to the end of this project. I hope you enjoyed it. Please press that like button, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell notification so you'll know when new videos are uploaded. As always, thanks for watching.